Today's video is sponsored by Omaze. Hit the link at omaze.com slash badseed to learn more. One of my favorite things since starting the channel is that every once in a while, I get to meet somebody brave or crazy enough to take this idea to develop hardware and go all in and try to enter the marketplace against some of these huge global brands. Luis from Digma is one of those people, really passionate guy, and he set out to build a split ergonomic keyboard that would be his version of end game. Guy knows a thing or two about ergonomics too, because he used to be the coach of Fnatic, so he's seen up close the effect that repetitive motion stress and injury can have on people firsthand. So if you follow the channel at all, you know I've had the V1 version of this board for a long time. And every time I get ready to do a review about this, they're either sold out or they're in the process of doing improvements to the board based on feedback they've received from people who have already adopted the keyboard. It seems to be a pretty cool customer company relationship. The V3 is finally here. I have it in house, it's in my hand, and it's in stock. So we're finally gonna take a look at this thing today and see if it's something that fits the bill for you. You ready? Let's go! Yo, I'm Brian P, you're watching Bad Seed Tech, and today we're looking at the Raze Split Ergonomic Keyboard from Digma. Full transparency, they did send this unit out for review, but as you should know by now, it doesn't affect my review in any way. So the Digma Raze is a split ergonomic small form factor keyboard with prices starting at $319 US. It's quite the unboxing experience too. It arrives in a newly updated slim zipper case. Right off the bat, this thing feels premium. Inside, you've got your board, an instruction sheet, some stickers, the Neuron, which is not just a splitter, but is actually the brain of the board. It's got the microprocessor and the onboard memory inside. Under this little folding flap, you have all of your cabling, a 1.5 meter USB A to C, two 20 centimeter USB C to C cables that connect each side of the board, and an extra 50 centimeter USB C to C that can connect the neuron to the computer or give you more distance on your split. The pocket on the case also acts as a catch-all. So if you travel with your board a lot, you can just toss your cables in and go. You also get this enhancement kit. Inside you've got alternate keys to swap the tilde and escape key and a menu key, which you can use in place of one of the Digma logo keys. You get a couple microfiber cloths, a little cleaning brush, two different gauges of O-rings, a demo of every Three available switch, so three flavors of Cherry MX, three flavors of Kale Speed, plus Kale Silent Box Pink and Browns, and my favorite style of cap and switch puller. The new case is much slimmer overall, and they deleted the handle to make it easier to put in a backpack or a laptop bag. I would have never thought of that. One of the first things you notice here is the unique shape of this board. That comes from the fact that the palm rests are split and actually part of the frame itself. They topped these with these palm pads. These have like a restickable silicone back, and I like that they're not permanently attached in case they start to wear or get dirty, you can just grab a new set. The quality on these two seems to have improved since the V1 version as well. So the frame itself here, the top plate is all aluminum, brushed on top and bead blasted on the sides. Comes in either silver with white or in all black. All the connections here on the board are USB-C. On the underside of the board, it is plastic and we see the Digma logo and shine through. There's rubber feet in all the corners, which again, have seen a big upgrade since the V1 version as well. Notably missing here is any kind of height adjust under this board. There's no flip down feet or anything under there at all. And I have seen some blog posts on their site. They are working on like a tenting system where you would be able to raise each side of the board as you want to get the feel you're going for, like you may have seen on different Ergo boards. It's something they've been working on for a while. I know they haven't 100% nailed the design down yet, and COVID has caused a lot of manufacturing delays. So ultimately, it is on the roadmap, they're just not there yet. This board is hot swap and it does accept five pin switches. Love to see it. North facing with per key RGB support as well. Stabilizers are easily accessible and pretty flat, so I wouldn't bother to clip these. They are very lightly lubed from the factory. They sound and feel pretty good stock, but I would re-lube these as you'll hear later in the typing test. For the US ANSI and the UK ISO layout, the keycaps are double shot PBT shine through. Pretty smooth too. They feel good, nice thickness. Legends are simple, seamless, no secondary legends anywhere. So the look of the board stays really clean. They do have other languages available, but those caps are currently only available in laser etch single shot ABS. Got to get in a quick word from today's sponsor. We'll be right back. I want to take just a minute to talk to you guys about today's sponsor, Omaze. It's always a win for me whenever I can use my platform in any way to help make a difference. And it could be a win for you too. You can enter for a chance to win $20,000 to build your dream PC setup, whatever that means for you. If you want to get into content creation, build a new streaming room, his and hers gaming rigs, whatever. Entries for this help benefit Children's Miracle Network Hospitals and the Bungie Foundation. 
Yeah, that Bungie. Bungie's iPads for Kids program helps provide an iPad in patient rooms inside children's hospitals so they can start interacting with secure and age-appropriate entertainment as soon as they enter the room to help take their mind off what can be a scary or stressful situation. Children's Miracle Network Hospitals raises money for 170 children's hospitals and reaches over 10 million kids a year across the U.S. and Canada. They fund life-saving treatments, research, pediatric medical equipment, and they ease the financial burden for families who otherwise couldn't afford these services. It's a win-win. Help make a difference and maybe walk away with a cool 20K to build the PC setup of your dreams. At that point, the only challenge will be finding parts in stock. For more information, hit the link at omaze.com slash badseed to see how you can get involved. Thanks again to Omaze for sponsoring today, and thank you for your time. I appreciate it. So the split itself is handled by just pulling the two sections apart. It works with magnets and these pins and guide pipes to help hold everything together. If you're really a stickler for things lining up, it's not 100%, it's like 98%. Like you see how the brushed versus bead blasted part of the aluminum doesn't quite match up here? I'm nitpicking, yes, but it's expensive. But functionally, it's super easy and it feels solid in use regardless of whether it's combined or split. For gaming, I love this functionality because you can simply do this and now you have all the room you would ever need for your mouse. Plus the added functionality of having four different areas you can hit with your thumb instead of a single space bar so you can remap those however you like. In typing, that's where things become a bit more challenging for me because as I'm sure you've seen in my typing tests, I have really poor typing mechanics. In particular, I have a tendency to cross over a lot and hit Y and B with the incorrect hands. So for someone like me, there is an aspect of learning curve involved here is to take advantage of that split layout, I'd effectively have to learn how to touch type all over again from the ground up and unlearn some bad habits. The beauty part here is that I'm not locked into using it in that split layout. So if at any point I'm feeling frustrated or I'm struggling, I can simply snap that board back together and keep typing as trash as I always have. The feel of the typing experience here though is very good. Fans of split keyboards or ergos may note the lack of an ortho linear layout here, but that's actually one of the things that attracted me to this board as a split ortho would be a really steep learning curve for me. I was pretty afraid the palm rest would come up short for me as well as I normally like my rest pretty far back from the board, but there's still plenty of room here. And I also thought I would miss height adjustment options, but the stock angle of the case itself feels really natural as well. The board sounds really good too. I went with the box silent pinks, which I already knew I was a fan of, and the board sounds really smooth, really dampened. Getting into the cluster in the middle of this board is where we start to see some important differences and functionality. Instead of a single space bar, we have eight different keys here. When we split the board, that leaves us with four on each side. Now, you can use their Basicore software to go in and rebind these to any function. You can rebind any key on the board to do whatever you want to, and you also have 10 layers of customization. But even without software, you have a ton of functionality right out of the box. Need a numpad? Cool, you just hold this down with your thumb and this becomes your tin key. Arrows? How about right under your home keys? No, that's not for you. How about the right shift cluster instead? When you let go, it's right back to the normal layout. You can one shot into a layer so that your very next key press is on that layer and then it immediately goes back to your base layer. You can set up keys that function one way when you tap and a different way when you hold, like this enter or layer change key. Got smaller hands, backspace too far of a reach? How about right under your thumb in addition to the original location? This thing basically takes the underutilized space associated with the single space bar and unlocks a ton of functionality. This is something that guys that run split spacebar have known for a long time, especially guys that use layers. After you use it for a while, it really starts to open up just how much functionality you have right under your fingers without moving off your home position. Mechanically, there are some important notes here. That bottom row is using Kale Chalk V1 switches, low profile, two on each side. When possibly looking at aftermarket keycap sets, it can be really difficult to find keys that fit this. The additional challenge is that the keys that make up this cluster themselves, the actual caps, are unique to this board. You can kind of work around this by adding an aftermarket market set in a similar colorway. Like here on the black version, I've added Drop Mito Pulse SA. Because the base color is black, the existing keys blend well, but it is 
something to keep in mind. I don't spend a lot of time talking about RGB normally, but I do want to point out this diffuser here because this is like really well done in terms of not being able to see the LEDs or having screws blocking the RGB at all. This was done with a system of light pipes. It's really interesting design stuff. I think overall between the per key and the wraparound lighting, it looks really clean. One thing I do want to point out here is that the board is like two separate boards. So when you split the board, you do have RGB running all the way around the sides. That's great. But like this rainbow gradient effect works for each one separately. But when you push the boards together, the color flow doesn't match up. It's not hugely important. Running in any single color mode doesn't cause a problem at all. It's just one of those things I like to mention. You can also completely customize this in the software as well, which has a staggering amount of lighting zones for static settings, but no animations like you'd find on more mainstream gaming boards. Once you have your board all set up how you like it, you just flash it to the onboard memory and you're good to go. So you don't have to have that software on any host computers. You can travel with your board wherever you want to, plug in, and you're all set. Overall, I really enjoy the Rays. It's a really unique look. The hot swap is there, it's done right. I would like to relearn touch typing as I can definitely see the comfort benefits of typing like this. I think I am going to run this on my gaming desk for a while. Editing is already stressful enough. I just got all my shortcuts set up the way they are. I'm not really in the mood to give up my dedicated arrows or my function row, but this thing does pack a ton of functionality into what's essentially a 60% layout. I just love this functionality right here so much. My apologies for not being able to have a more constructive value conversation here today because it is expensive. It can go as high as 375 before add-ons. It's just that I don't know a lot about the ergo market. This thing is a unique animal. I can't see it pulling away necessarily people who are interested really in high-end customs just because of that keycap compatibility concern. It seems like it's priced pretty ballpark alongside the ergo docs, which is the big name you probably know in split ergonomic keyboards. That also has some enhanced functionality, but it also is an ortholinear layout, which you may see as a pro or a con. Maybe somebody with more experience in that market could offer up some insight in the comments, or if you have adopted arrays already, I'd be really interested to hear what your customer experience has been like so far. What I can say is it feels built really well. It's got a ton of functionality. I'm excited to learn how to use it. It apparently has good response to community feedback. I think it looks really clean. I like the small company vibe, and I like the pedigree of the guy behind it. As I said, these are in stock right now, which is pretty rare. So links down in the description if you want to learn more. Big thanks again to Omaze for sponsoring today. Hit the link at omaze.com slash badseed to see how you may be able to win a $20,000 dream PC setup. And that's it for this time. I'm Brian P. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button, hit that sub button. And until next time, stay up. <laughs>